Mr. Valentine Part 5, A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction. If you have not heard the previous four parts of this story, you can find a link to them in the description box below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and comment down below in support of more fan fiction. Marinette woke up to the sound of tapping on her roof. That's odd. She stole a glance at her nightstand to see Tiki sleeping soundly before getting out of bed. Grabbing a cardigan, the sleepy girl headed up to see what was making noise. The last time there was a disturbance on the roof, it was a pair of pigeons fighting over her forgotten sandwich. She felt the door to the night sky hit something as she opened it. That's odd. Whatever was behind it was large enough to prevent her from opening. <sighs> oh. Wait a minute. She knew that voice! Cat Noir? She said, the door still between them. She tried again, and the door lifted with no restraints to a now-embarrassed Parisian superhero. Hey, princess! He said, rubbing his chin. What are you... She began. <laughs> nope. She didn't have room to talk. Hey. Why are you awake? I heard a stray tomcat on the roof. Fair enough. Want to go out with me? Excuse me? She didn't have time for his antics. Have you ever been on the roof of Notre Dame? She knew better than to answer honestly. Why? Wanna go? His ears twitched and Marinette noticed the way the moonlight illuminated his hair. Nah. She saw a look of surprise flash across his face at her response but shrugged it off. Okay. Cat leaned forward. Well then, where do you want to go? Back to bed, where it's warm. Her teeth were chattering now, her pajamas too thin for a February night. She noticed the hesitation in his body language before he continued. Do you mind if I come in? I could... I don't know read you a book or something until you fall back asleep. Hmm. Marinette could tell her partner was out of sorts. She didn't know why he was out of sorts, nor why he came to her, but she gestured him to follow her inside. Rumor on the street says you have a boyfriend now, little lady, Kat said, his voice low and soft as he tiptoed inside. You pay attention to the gossip magazines? Of course. It would be a shame to not acknowledge the candids of this. He gestured to himself. Lovely frame. She rolled her eyes and tossed a DVD at him. One episode, then you're gone. He looked at the box and his eyes widened in surprise. Le Pacte de Yokai? You like this? A friend of mine mentioned Natsume's Book of Friends, so I decided to watch it. Huh. Do you know it? I've read the books, but I haven't watched the anime. <laughs> you would read manga. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. She smiled, pulling out her laptop. It was so easy to give Cat Noir a hard time. They ended up sitting on the chase together to watch the show, close enough to be friendly, but far apart enough to feel awkward and self-conscious of the other's existence. Marinette, while she enjoyed the pilot, found herself struggling to pay attention to the show because she worried Cat Noir didn't care for it and would judge her decision. After 21 long minutes, the end song played, and Marinette noticed Cat's arm behind her. It wasn't around her, 
but it rested on the back of the chaise where she sat. It was just a form of relaxation, as his legs were crossed with one ankle resting on his knee, but it made Marinette wonder why he was so comfortable. Was it just her? Or was he this way with most people? Sure, he'd met her a few times while out and about, but there was a moment when she stole a glance at him laughing at the show and wondered if he knew her as a civilian. He wouldn't be the only one to use his mask to make house calls, after all. Okay, alley cat, Marinette said, standing up. Let's not overstay your welcome. Thank you for having me at such a particular hour, he said. She rolled her eyes and pointed to the roof before seeing him open his arms for a hug. She usually wouldn't hesitate, but remembered how he didn't touch Ladybug. There was an irony to it. She hugged him, but felt more separated than the night they were sitting on the roof of Notre Dame, manipulating bells into music. I'll see you around, little lady. Go to bed, cat. He left as quietly as he came, shutting the trap door to the roof gently behind him. Marinette sighed, sleep stinging her eyes, and crawled back to bed. She dreamed that night she was sitting on the roof of Notre Dame, sitting next to someone and laughing during a sunrise. The person beside her was Cat Noir, and yet he wasn't Cat Noir. She couldn't quite see his face, blinded by the morning sun, but he wasn't wearing a mask. They sat there, laughing, like old friends and he put his arm around her, the black leather of his suit warm from the Parisian sun. The dream would be lost by the time she woke up, but it relaxed Marinette nonetheless. No one was there to witness the smile on her face as she slept. But it doesn't matter if a tree makes a sound in the forest when it falls. Just like a tree, she was falling, but had yet to make a sound. Thank you so much for listening. Part 6 is on its way. You can check out these other videos for more fanfiction. I'll catch you next time.